Let us rise for the reading of this morning's sermon text recorded for us by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans where we read from chapter 8 beginning with verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. Glorious and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our only source of hope and comfort. Amen. Dear followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this past summer was my 35th high school class reunion. I didn't make it, I didn't go, but one of those interesting things that our modern conveniences allow is for people to reconnect. And it seems like when it's your 35th class reunion, all your high school friends want to reconnect with you. So this year I've been having all these Facebook requests to be friends. Friends I have not spoken to in 37 years in some cases. And it was my 35th reunion. But there was one, I was going to say girl, she's a lady now, who became my friend again and we reconnected. And she and her family happened to be coming to Long Beach. And she thought it would be good if we could maybe spend some time together, spend the day together. And it was a really interesting day. I learned a lot about her family. She has three daughters. We talked about one of her daughters in particular, was graduating from college with a master's degree, was engaged. She went to her fiance's cabin in northern Wisconsin for the weekend with his family. And they were out in the woods having a good time, and a branch from a pine tree fell, hit her on the back of the neck, and left her paralyzed. An interesting turn of events. Over a year in hospitals trying to see what was going to be recovered, if Reeling was going to return, if there was going to be any movable parts anymore. A very difficult time for this young lady. And in one of the conversations that people were having with her, who was a Wells girl, grew up Wells, still attending a Wells congregation, people kept asking her the same question. Aren't you mad at God? Aren't you angry that God allowed this to happen to you? And this was her response. God knew this was going to happen to me before he made me. How can I be angry with him because he loves me? Because he loves me. Because he loves you. Because he loves us as his children. That young woman made a tremendous statement of faith. Realizing that even in the midst of what we might see as a horrible, tragic accident, it turned her life upside down. It ended her engagement. It ended her ability to walk. It took so many things away from her that you and I take for granted. But the one thing she constantly held on to, the one thing that really mattered, that one thing that was her true treasure in the world, was the fact that God loved her. 
loved her before he created her, knew her before he created her, and called her to be his daughter. It's exactly what the Apostle Paul is reminding us of in the letter to the Romans today. That amazing truth of our life as the children of God is that God loves us. And that you and I should never doubt that love. He has saved us. He works everything out for our good. And that is what we know by faith. It is what we believe by faith. And it is what we need to constantly remind ourselves of. Because so often in our lives, we can think that God is against us. Or God maybe doesn't like us. Or God certainly is the one who's picking on us in our life because things aren't going the way that we want or the way that we desire. And sometimes we can't see past the fact of all that God has done for us. And the Apostle Paul lays this out so clearly in this section that God foreknew us. He predestined us. He chose us out of the world to be his own, that he came to us in love and sought us out to call us to be his sons and daughters, to bring us to faith by the power of the Holy Spirit, regenerating life in our heart so that we are reborn as children of God. No longer children of the world or children of sin or children of Satan, but belonging to God. In his love, he took care of our greatest needs by putting into effect a plan of salvation where he would send the Messiah, where he would send a Savior, a Savior from sin that would stop those things that sin brought into this world, the results of sin entering this world, death, damnation, and all of the evil that surrounds us because of that sin. God, in his love, planned, carried out, executed the beautiful path of our salvation by his son, Jesus Christ. God, out of love for us, sent his Son. Jesus, out of love for us, left the glories of heaven to live in this world, to live our perfect life, to die our perfect death, to sacrifice himself for our sins because of his great love for us. He rose in strength and power on Easter Sunday, reminding us that we too will rise, that he doesn't abandon us, that he does not leave us in the grave, but we will rise to live with him in his home where we will constantly be under his loving care and his loving direction. It is God, the Holy Spirit, who in love came to us and caused us to be alive in Jesus Christ. And we know that having been justified, declared not guilty by God the Father according to Christ's work, we will also be glorified. That we will have that glorified body when we too rise from the dead, just as Jesus Christ, the first fruits of those who rose from the dead. There is our eternal glory. There is our strength. There is that reminder that God has loved us. And it's such a simple truth. But it's one that as we pour over it each day in our life, we come up with new and different ways of understanding and appreciating what God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit did and still does to keep us in that faith to show us his love constantly, his mercy to us. And yes, we have to fight against our own selfishness, our own ego that sometimes thinks we know better than God. That if God loved me, he wouldn't do this to me. 
If God loved me, he wouldn't allow this event to happen in my life. But at those times, we need to sit with God and understand that God works for the good of those who love him. That no matter what comes into our life, our Heavenly Father is going to use it for our eternal good. For the good of those around us eternally. For the good of the church. Realizing that he is guiding our lives. That he is the one who is there to take these events that to us in our short-sightedness seem like the worst possible thing that could ever happen. But with his all knowledge, he understands how to make it serve our good, our purpose, as well as his good and his purpose for the purpose of the church. And as people of God, we should not lose sight of that fact. We shouldn't just throw it all away in frustration. We know that we want God to act in our time frame and the way we want him to act. But faith says, I hold to him and I trust him. His love for me is so great that he's not going to harm me and he is going to take any situation and turn it out for our good. Good that we may never see or understand in our life, but we know that God has promised this and it will happen. Rather interesting light to Sam's story, Samantha, the girl who's paralyzed. The reason that they were in Long Beach was she was competing in the Ms. Wheelchair America competition. One of the things that you know the minute you talk to her is she is a woman of faith. It's evident in the things that she says. It's evident in the confession that she makes. A year ago, I don't think she even thought of being in Long Beach. But God has an interesting way of making things turn out for good. She is now Miss Wheelchair America 2015. One of the things that is important to her is it is now a greater opportunity for her to share Her faith. An opportunity to talk to more people about God and how good he is and his love. And it is a reminder to us that when we are going through those difficult things, that when we are going through those trials that don't seem to have an answer that makes us happy, or a trial that we don't think is ever going to end, God has a reason, and God has a purpose, and it is going to be for good. That's what we hold on to. That is what we look to. And that becomes our confession, because it makes us different. As the children of God, it is our faith in Christ and the strength of his love that provides for our daily living. And when push comes to shove, it is very clear where our faith and trust lies. We as God's children always go back to him. When we don't understand, when we can't comprehend, and we sit at his feet and say, God, use me. Use me as your instrument because I trust you and I know that you love me. And even this thing, this thing in my life that is so annoying or difficult, I know is going to pass. But I also know that you will work it for my good and for the good of your church because you love me. And that reminder is one that we should be hearing every day from the pages of Scripture because God's Word speaks to His love for humanity. 
It speaks to his love for us. Hear, listen to that wonderful good news that God loves you. Amen. Let us rise. We pray. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith, to the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen.